The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the December 3rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon, although it is just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you're listening to the normal slot, we'll make sure that this show is as pertinent as it can. And thank you for listening during that time period. But if you're listening here at live at 8 a.m., we'd love to hear from you. You can always give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices, uh, U.S. indices, the U.S. equity futures trading higher. The Dow is up by 79 points. The Nasdaq up 57. The S&P 12. The Russell's up 11. In Asia last night, a little bit of a mixed bag. It was the Hang Seng that finished low. We're going to take a look at those indices out there. In, Ger in uh, Europe right now, you've got both the uh, German DAX and the uh, FTSE in the UK trading higher by about a half of a percent. Gold is up eight bucks. Silver up one penny. You've got late sweet crude trading out at 68.31. That's up a buck 81. The 30 year treasury is up six ticks. She's trading out at 162.17. So let's begin the day by just going and seeing what's going on in Europe. We sort of have kind of a one world market, so to speak. And there's certainly information that we can glean from what's going on there. So we begin by taking a look at the uh, Shanghai. That's in the upper left hand corner. What you should notice here is the Shanghai confirmed a buy the D point. It did that when it generated this hammer candle right back here on November 10th. That was also, it had a already a confirmed TD9 count pattern. That still remains in effect out there. And now it took place last night as price closed above its TD9 breakdown level. That's at 3762.31. It also closed above the swing point from November 24th. And that then, and that was a resistance level because of the bearish engulfing that took place on the following trading session. So now what the Shanghai has is an A to B equals CD to the upside. You might ask me, where's that first target? We'll just draw the A to B leg in here. And it will just simply move that to the C. Oops, we'll try to move that from the C to D area. We go right there. And so about the 3860-ish type area would be the one-to-one -one price projection. But the Shanghai, a week at much weaker than the U.S. out here, has a confirmed, now has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. In the case of the Hang Seng, this formed a TD nine count pattern. It did it back on November 30th. Since then, we've had some sideways movement here. What the Hang Seng is doing is targeting its oscillator and change line. That's at the 2410943 level. That's where it's at right now. It's not gonna hit that to the T as price moves up and down that line. will all also move up and down. If we take a look at the Nikkei, the Nikkei has a buy the D point. I'm sorry, it has a TD9 count. Yeah, just a TD9 count in there. So the Nikkei should also target the oscillator and change line at 28,639. So these three core indices over in China are telling us what? They all have bottoming patterns. The Shanghai should continue as a confirmed A to B equal CD to the upside. The Hang Seng and the Hang Seng and the Nikkei should also continue higher. If we look at the DAX out here, the DAX confirmed a buy the D point two days ago. It did that when it created this three three river morning star pattern. It's three candle formation. It can be uh, accomplished in four or five candles, but this is a three river morning star candle. Support is the bottom of that pattern. Support is down at the uh, low of 15015. Here you can also see the oscillator and change line had changed colors. It did the same thing inside the Nikkei. That adds to the idea 
uh, that price should go target the, that level, the oscillator and change line. In the case of the Hang Seng, going back to it, its oscillator and change line had changed colors and price closed above it. That was telling us, and, and then it, it tur had turned green. That was telling us about a bullish indication for it. Now, in the FTSE, all the FTSE has is price pulled. Well, it actually has a confirmed by the D point. It did that a couple of days ago with that bullish engulfing candle. What we know about the FTSE is it formed wave number seven. That's letter G. That's part of the uh, Chapman wave uh, count out there. Oftentimes can identify a top or a bottom. And price pulled right back to where it had broken out. Now it's at the 69.9587. Now price is trading between support. We know that 69.9587 is support and resistance, which is that oscillator and change line. See how it had changed colors here? So today is pretty much or very close to a test of that level. A test of rejection of the FTSE would be negative. It suggests that price might go back and retest that breakout level of 69.95. The US dollar index out here, <clears throat> this uh it's just uh, rolled over into the uh, march contract out there so this I, I have a synthetic version of the u.s dollar index and it shows that price is just consolidating inside its daily profile so that's what it's doing i'm not going to ignore i'm going to ignore the profile levels that are out here uh the euro is uh, has uh, has what this has a buy the d point that was confirmed with a three river morning star pattern and as long as price remains above its oscillator and change line it should target that 1.160 level and inside the uh, yen out here uh, it's found support it has held support which was established back on november the uh, 10th but it just simply formed that bullish engulfing candle out here so it's held support looks to me like the yen wants to weaken get up to about the 114 11 area that will uh, put a little bit of strength inside the us dollar index if that unfolds so in summary here uh, support levels have held. We've got bottoming patterns suggesting higher price. What does that mean for the U.S. markets? Well, it means in the U.S. we should see the same kind of things out here. In the U.S., we'll go take a look at its equity future contract. So what do we know about it? There's really only two bottoming patterns that have completed out here, and that is for the Dow. That's the bottom, YM. That formed a TD9 count. You can see its oscillator and change line has recently changed color. So price and that line have a, a date with each other. Right now, that line is printed out at 35,162. The same holds true for the Russell 2000. It too formed a TD9 count. Its oscillator and change line also recently changed color. So price should target that level, 22.74. I'm not saying it, it uh, targets that level today, but it should target that level. Now, the Dow. Uh, YM just went ahead and inserted the uh, new market profile that formed out here. And it did form, and it's really an interesting one. It's a bullish structured profile. It shows you support here at 34, 322. And price is sitting right now at the center of that bullish structured profile. So here's my experience. My experience is this. When price closes above the center of a profile, by the way, the center level, let me give that to you, 34,717, <coughs> odds favor that price will go target the top of the profile. But before price can get to the top, and it's way up there. It's up at the 35,900 level. Has me scratching my head just a tad. But before price can get up there, its first target's going to be that oscillator and change line in the 35,164. So the call on the Dow and the Russell 2000 is much easier because of the bottom patterns. In the case of the uh, the NQ, it's not. It has an A to B equals CD to the downside. Hasn't completed it. Price is still below <coughs> the bottom of its daily profile. We'll call the the, the bounce that's inside the market right now, we're going to use the NQ as our key out here. Everything remains in a counter trend bounce at this stage here. And that's unless we see the NQ What's close above 16,134, the, the center of its profile. That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I seem to have a issue with my uh, clock here, which is a little bit off from the actual show segment. And I was talking as we were going off the air. So I've just switched over to our black background charts. And we were taking a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. And on my white background charts, which we've got the December contract, we'll be rolling over uh, to the uh, March 22 contract uh, next week out here. Uh, it has different profiles out here. So you'll see as you take a look at this black background screen. So on the white background screen, it was bullish in structure. On the black background screen, it's bearish in structure. So which one is right? And to a certain extent, they're both right. I don't have any way of reconciling it. We just simply use that information. The bottom, though, is at 34,322. And that's the same on both. And the top is at 35,900. And that is the same on both. So it's really all about the center. And where is the center of that profile out, out here? But right now, that doesn't necessarily matter to us because we know that as we we're looking at that white background chart, as we wanted to break last time, price should first target that oscillator and change line in that 35,160 level. Now, the ES Mini doesn't have a bottoming pattern, but what it did do, and it did this yesterday and the day before, was it tested and rejected the bottom of its weekly profile. So a key level of support has changed. And I say a key level, that's such a key level that if price, had closed, if price closes below that today, that'll tell us about a, a change in trend signal. Otherwise, that is the bottom the dip area now there's a new profile that is also attempting to form here uh, I'm using my advanced Doppler tool and this will not be confirmed until Sunday evening but right now we do know where buyers and sellers reside buyers at 4519 sellers at 4717 and both buyers and sellers are happy when price is at the center and the center right now is exactly where price is trading or very close to it at 4585 we're trading at 4584 basically. Now, I was referring to the NQ, and I was saying, look, at this stage here, even though we've got some bottoms in on the Russell and the uh, Dow, that everything, I'm looking at everything right now being a counter trend rally, unless, unless we see the NQ close above 16,134. 16,134 is the center of its bullish structured profile. When you close below that, and you do it for two consecutive sessions, it tells you about a real break to the downside. Then what it tells us is that counter trend moves will typically find resistance at either the bottom. My experience is more so more often than not, it is the center. Again, that's where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value inside that range. But that is typically where the counter trend rally would end. 16,134. What happens if price closes above that? Well, good, good question. The answer would be price would then go target the oscillator and change line, which is at 16,331. Now, the oscillator and change line is held as, as held as resistance all week long, even last Friday out there. 
Uh, and so that's going to be a key area. And if price could then close above that level, then we'd be looking to move to 16609. So that's why I say just counter trend move. Now, if we take a look at what's going on in the short term here, and then we'll get to some of the questions that have come in, we'll just go to the 30 minute time frames for the equity future contract. So the key levels that need to be crossed, and it's on each of them, are the TD9 count breakdown areas. Those are the green horizontal lines. So in the ES, write this down in your pad of paper. 4589. If there's two consecutive closes above 4589 on the 30 minute chart out here, that's telling us about a move to 4634. In the case of the NQ, if there's two consecutive closes on a 30 minute basis above 1602775, that tells us that the NQ should target 16348. Wait a minute. Stevie, you said 16348 and you said on the daily was at 16331. So use that as the range out there as to the price target. And I'm not saying that it does that today just giving you the price target and the ceiling that has to be broken. Inside the Dow, the YM, the ceiling that needs to be broken is 34,728. And inside the Russell 2000, it's 2215. Now, in the case of both the Russell and the NQ during this session right now, they're both, and really the ES is trying to test that level. Um, doesn't have to do it during this session. As long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, it should continue to pound away at that resistance level. But those are the areas to watch. That'll give you a clue right now if you're listening to 822, what's going on this morning. And uh, at 122 in the afternoon, you'll know whether or not price is trading above those levels. And then uh, you can see whether uh, price is coming to fruition, hitting those target areas. Did I give you the target in the Russell? I don't think I did. Uh, let me give you this. So the target upside target, if price can close about 2215, would be 2250, 2252.20. So that's what's going on in the markets overall. Just to get a gen, not all the markets here, but we do have some questions that have come in that probably take us to some of those other instruments. So let's go take the first question. The first question is coming in from Marty. And Marty wants to take a look at uh, a gold stock, BTG. So let's get off of this screen here. Let's get back to our black background screens. And what we're going to do is we're going to put up the three time frame chart for it. I'm actually doing one other thing first, which is trying to get that going on my, my white background screens. Okay, we've got that in place. Now let's take a look at BTG. BTG, and the question for Marty is gold stock, BTG looks like, Look, looks to be a buy. What do the charts tell you, please? So in the case of BTG, we want to go to my white background chart here momentarily. But we can see that price is below the bottom of its daily, below the bottom of its weekly, and the level of support is the monthly time frame. Now, this is a bullish structured profile. Uh, and whether there's a pattern there or not, price is pulled back to support. And so the key area that you're watching here, Marty, is going to be $3.71. Now, it's the early part of the month out here. But if price closes below that, that's not really a good scene. So that's the first thing that we know. There's no A to no real A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. I mean, I could draw one in there. If I were to draw one in, it would look like this, though. So let's do this. The, the A point, that's easy to find. That would be out here on November the 11th. The B point would be the low from November 23rd. And the C point would be the high from November 26th. So it has made the one-to-one -one level. And that is a uh, bullish hammer candle out there. So, uh, Marty, in that instance here, you do have a buy the D point pattern. Okay, so we've got that established. A buy the D point pattern established on the daily uh, with price at support on the weekly, the bottom of that uh, monthly, pro I'm, I'm sorry, the monthly, uh, which is the bottom of that profile, 371. Let's pull over the other charts out here, see what other information we might be able to glean. So what BTG did, much like many of the gold stocks, is they negated their TD9 counts. In this case here, it also closed below its breakout level of support at 384. So that could be a level of resistance. But price should go ahead and make a move up to the $4.16. So you're asking me, what do my charts show? That's what that tells us. Let's look at the monthly chart out here, see if there's any kind of a signal there. There's nothing good here. I'm sorry, did I say monthly? The weekly chart. It does have a rose momentum indicator bottom, and that formed back on October the uh, the week of October the 8th. And so price is just pulling back. We just don't like that it's uh, below the bottom of that weekly profile and a red oscillator and change line. The monthly chart out here, I don't really have much. But we do know that the profile level is held. So if you're looking to take a stab at this, let's go to the short-term charts. What do we got on the 30-minute? Not much. Not much on the 65. Not much on the 130. Not much. Oh, on the 195, there's 295-minute bars in a trading session. You do have a valid TD9 count top. This suggests at least a move to 393. But if you're looking for a reason to enter, you do have a buy the D point. That's a Gartley buy pattern, Marty. So you've got what you need out there. Just make sure you use a uh, stop and use some 
proper position sizing. So thanks so much for writing in and hope that helps you out and have a fantastic Friday. The next question coming in from uh, Tim. Tim writes in, he says, I belong uh, advanced micro devices, AMD. So let's get that up on the screen out here and continue reading the question. Could you please review support resistance levels for the daily and weekly timeframes? Absolutely. Uh, if it's a slow day, could you look at um, at core ATKR as well? Same parameters. Thanks uh, so much for everything you do. You you bet. You totally rock. Uh, you're you're funny. You're you're great. Okay, so let's go take a look at advanced micro devices, which has closed below now for two consecutive sessions below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So Tim, very much like we were looking at in the NQ, it'll only be a counter trend rally if it does rally. Uh, up into the 153.46 level. Price closed above 153.46, tells us we're back on our way to the 157.67 level. Price above the top of the weekly and monthly profile. So support is way down there. We're not even gonna give you those figures because I don't know if that's support. We'll look at the white background charts as soon as we get back to this break. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so uh, we're waiting for the uh, jobs report uh, data uh, to come out here, see if it impacts the uh, markets. But right now we're taking a look at AMD for Tim. And so, Tim, uh, here, so we take a look at now my white background chart. You're going to see wave number seven. That's letter G. That's a topping signal. You see a road momentum indicator confirmed top uh, with that dark cloud cover. And now we've got price below for two consecutive sessions below the bottom of its uh, bullish structure daily profile out there. So that suggests that that price wants to move lower. Lower, the breakout here is at 118.13. 
Now, what Price has not done here, Tim, has not uh, been able to take out the swing point from last Friday, uh, November the uh, 23rd out here. Uh, no, that wasn't last Friday. That would have been before. But it's that swing point either way. Now, not yesterday, but the day before was pushing into it with uh, higher volume. Yesterday was slightly less volume, but it hasn't busted that out. So here's the deal. If you see a close below 145.30, that's your signal that it's going to go target the 118.13 level out there. The resistance, 151.36, the bottom of the daily profile, the real resistance would be 153.46, the center of that bullish structured profile. So that's what I would be watching for. On a weekly chart out here, you are going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. So that can be a top. You still have to form bar number nine in order to do that, but that most certainly can be a uh, top out there. And on the monthly chart, I don't have, whoops, got to get to the monthly first. The monthly chart, I don't really have anything to suggest that a top is in or anything along those lines. But the daily and uh, weekly are just saying to be cautious. So that's what I see when I take a look at AMD. Now, we're going to take a look at the other instrument, ATKR, momentarily. But I'm just going to switch. Uh, let me get that actually going here. ATK, ATKR. I hear my uh, CPU is firing off. So uh, typical during like a jobs report. But let's go take a look at uh, what's going on here in the market. So... A little bit of a movement in gold, just a few bucks at this stage here. The equity markets have taken off. You got Dow Futures up 120, NASDAQ 114, S&P 21. So that's really kind of following along the theme of what we have been taking a look at as we went through the uh, markets out here uh, so far. So uh, let's go back to the request to take a look at ATKR, which is Atcore Inc. So Atcore Inc. Uh, closed above the top of its daily profile yesterday, which is 108.31. It's above the top of the weekly and monthly. So this suggests to me that it's likely to go retarget its uh, swing point from November 22nd. That's in the 113 at the bottom and at the highs at 118.49. Uh, so let's pull over ATKR, the white background chart, see if there's any other signals out here. And voila, there is. So when it was making that high, that we were looking at. That was a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And that was confirmed as a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the next day, the 23rd, when it generated that bear sash candle. And uh, so price is really kind of neutral. You're above the top of the profile, just slightly below the oscillator and change line, but you have a topping signal. So on a daily basis, the signal here, ATKR, is neutral. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly is also neutral. It has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. But price is above that green oscillator and change line. And as long as price remains above that, Tim, that's telling you about a strong momentum move out there. Now, if price gave up and closed below 105.65, that's the weekly oscillator and change line. That would suggest lower price. That might take us out of the neutral zone. And lastly, if we look at the monthly, there's nothing out here to assist us with. So with regard to ATKR, it's in neutral territory as we speak right now. And uh, thanks so much for writing in and have a fantastic weekend. The next question, let's go see where there's another question that we have in here. And, uh, whoops, let me get over there. Where's that? It's from, oh, great. It's from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent writes in, so he's up early. It's 8, 534 in the morning there. And he sent in the email uh, at uh, 730 my time. <laughs> Brent gets no sleep. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, could you please look at... Uh, at the active gold and oil contracts, you went gold yesterday at the lows with the call option and GLD was looking at oil yesterday as a possible long as well. Do you think this is a bottom in oil or a bounce? Well, we can look at both in multiple time frames. Great. So we'll do that for you, Brent. So to start with oil, uh, and I've been looking at it myself, uh, there's no real, well, I, I don't see a bottom pattern on the daily time frame. But here's what we do see. I'm going to look at the multiple time frames. So oil yesterday... Uh, what it did was it was able to get back to test its rising trend line on the weekly basis. So as long as that level holds, so prices come back to an area of support. It's not a profile level of support. Um, it is a profile level of support, Brent, if we were to look at the monthly chart. So we spent a little bit of the morning taking a look at a couple of instruments like the NQ and maybe it was AMD or something, talking about when you close below the bottom of a bullish structured profile. The opposite is true as well, Brent. If you close above the top of a bearish structured profile, any moves lower should find support at either the top of that profile or, again, because it's bearish in structure, really the center. And that's exactly what took place yesterday. 62.63 is the center of that profile. So there are two levels of support that have held. Now, with regard to Lightsweed Crude, 
it is attempting to form a new profile right now. And so the resistance level is at six between 69.15 and 70.83. Now, I will not know until Sunday if this profile is going to take hold. But Brent, if it has presented itself, even if I'm using my advanced Doppler tool, that is where the buyers and sellers exist. So would I take a, a long position light sweet crude right now? Probably not knowing that the daily is trading into a resistance level. You did ask me to take a look at multiple time frame charts. So I'm going to do that. It'll take me just a moment to do this. I need to change screens and need to change my uh, worksheets out there. So that just takes a moment. But we're getting fairly efficient at this. So here, what you're going to see pop up are eight different time frame charts here for light sweet crude. And we're just going to look at the intraday charts. Now, each of the intraday charts here for light sweet crude have bottoming signals. The 60 minutes got a road to indicator bottom, as does the 120, as does the 240. Uh, the five hour time frame chart also has a road to indicator bottom. So it's telling us that it is trying to form that bottom, Brent. The only reason I say, hey, I don't know if I'd take that trade just yet is because of that bearish structure daily profile. But do the intraday charts support a possible bottom? Yes, do the daily time frame charts support a possible bottom? No, uh, but the weekly and the monthly are saying yes. So I, I hope that's not confusing, uh, but that's what the charts are communicating to us. Uh, do I see anything else that is worthwhile to report on as we look at it? I would say, <clears throat> no, not really. It's gonna be that 6915, 7083 level that will tell you whether this is a bottom or not out there. And, uh, oh, you also wanted to look at uh, gold. So let's go take a look at gold. Let's do really the same thing. So let's uh, stay on this set of panels out here and let's go to its eight time frame chart. So in the case of Goldilocks, <clears throat> Gold formed a TD9 count bottom. So you took that trade. I would close out that trade if you see a close below yesterday's low because that would be suggested that we had lower out here. Um, but you do have a valid bottom. When we take a look at the intraday time frame charts out here, the 30-minute uh, has a bottom pattern in place out here. And you do have three, one, two, three higher lows that I see. So that's a positive. The oscillator and change line for the daily time frame changed colors a couple days ago. So because we have a, a, a confirmed TD9 count bottom, price and the OUL should test each other. Right now, that's in the 1802 level. If I look for a bottom signal here on the 120 minute time frame, I don't see it. I do see one on the 240. And a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom is trying to form on the five hour. We just don't have the bullish reversal candle as we speak. So with regard to uh, gold, it does look like it's bottom, both gold and silver. And real quickly here, I'll change to a different set of charts. And what you'll see on both, TD nine count bottoms, oscillator and change lines that change color, price has a target with both of those levels. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. If you are listening to the normal slot, 142 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. We are recording this today between 8 and 9, trying to make it as pertinent as we can for you. We had the jobs uh, payroll uh, data come out uh, and uh, not really a substantial change in the uh, markets out here. Still all the U.S. equity future contracts trading to the upside. Uh, gold's up by nine bucks, silver up a nickel out here. Let's go to our next question. Our next question coming in from the Tigers down and it really kind of goes into, we just took a look at gold, take a look at the GDX. And as we take a look at the GDX, it actually has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside with the first price projection being 29.59. It's confirmed because the B point, which took place on November 26, had volume of 21 million shares. It was passed, meaning closed below on the trading day of December 1st. And that was with 30 million shares. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. However, and here's the caveat. Typically, the mining equities will follow the direction of gold. So if gold is bottom and gold is going to trade higher, then uh, maybe the A to B equals CD pattern doesn't complete. Maybe. I don't know whether it does or it doesn't. We'll get a fairly decent feel for it uh, today, I suppose. And also, we have to pay attention to what gold is doing. With regard to additional support, so you've got 29.59 as an A to B equals CD. The bottom of the weekly profile is 29.30. So those would be the support areas to watch. As I take open up the white background chart, what we're going to see is that yesterday's price action negated its TD9 count. And a TD9 count bottom, that bottom needs to occur on bars 8 and 9 or the bar following 9. Well, it did occur on the bar following 9, but yesterday was closed below that. And that says that price could pull back to 29.17. That's its next TD9 count breakout level. So that's what the GDX is telling us. Uh, but uh, we really need to be paying attention to Goldilocks to see what its intent is. If gold trades higher, odds favor that and if gold is bottom is really what I should say, then odds favor that so too has the GDX, even if it has a little bit of work to do to the downside out there. So I hope that helps you out. That was somebody in the den. I apologize. I don't recall who, but I want to make sure that I got to that. And let's get to the last question that is in here. And we're ready to take more, although we uh, don't have that much more time left in the show. But this one coming in from David H. And this is David in Tom Ball, Texas. Happy Friday and happy Friday to you. Please look at Dollar General. Can you give me an entry point? So Dollar General's ticker symbol is DG. So let's pull that up here. And this had a terrible day yesterday. And the reason why I say it was terrible is not only did it have some good volume of 3.4 million shares for it, it was a close below its bullish structured daily profile. 
And if we get a second close below that today here, David, that suggests lower price. Now, lower price would be where? Well, when you close below a bottom of weekly profile, my eyes immediately go to, hey, what's going on on the weekly basis? As we can see, it's trading with inside a bearish structured profile. Now, this could be the first week where we see price close below 220.91. That's the center of the bearish structured profile. My experience is when you close below the center of a bearish structure profile, more often than not, price will make its way down to the bottom. So where, and I'm not saying that this is the buy here, Dave, uh, uh, David. What I am saying is that price should go target 206.24. Below that, we then take a look at the monthly set of profiles, which are down between 193 and a quarter, 199.84. Now let's pull over the white background charts, see what additional information David and I can glean. One of the pieces of information that we can glean here as we open this chart is that price is likely to target 209.50. 209.50 is its breakout level. Now, maybe that holds. I don't have a bottom signal in here, uh, but that could be an area where it would hold. And if it does, you go over to the short term time frames like 30, 65, 130, 195 to look for some other kind of bottoming signal there. But if price closes below 209.50, that tells us about a run back to its uh, TD9 count bottom. That took place on October 4th out there. And really their support area would be the low of October 6th, and that would be 203.80. So at this stage here, it looks like price wants to head lower. The question is, which of these support levels will hold? If any of them, we don't know that. We have to let price play out. What we do know based upon this is we don't see a bottom. You were looking, can you give you an entry point? Because we don't see a pattern that suggests that there's an entry point just yet. The weekly time frame for DG shows 204.28 as a breakout level. That was tested on a move lower after TD9 count and wave number seven top back in August the 13th. And you can see price got back here. And there's no bottom pattern that formed as price is getting back than the weekly, but in essence, bottom is or bottom can be when price pulls back to where price had broken out from just like a top can be where price is broken down from and price gets back to that level so with regard to dollar general uh david i think you've got to wait for a bit watch as price gets to those areas if it gets to those areas please uh you know get back to me we'll we'll we'll, we'll evaluate it then but dollar general looks like it wants to continue to move lower. I don't know what it's doing in the pre-market. Well, we could find out real quickly here. Dollar General DG is a ticker symbol. It's trading out at 216, closed yesterday at 215.81, so not really doing too much out there. So thanks so much for writing in. Bob A in the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol PR, PRQR. So we're going to do that, get that fired up on our three time frame charts out here, PRQR. Thanks for the request, Bob. So as we take a look at it, it is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Suggest to you and I that price, because it's trading with inside its weekly profile, at 619 may be its target to the downside. At 628, that is the top of the monthly profile. So PQRQ, PRQR, boy, did I screw that up? I did. Uh, PROQR is reading the name. Uh, that's, how do you pronounce that? Proker? Okay, Proker Therapeutics. Uh, in any event, so you at 628 to 619 uh, is a potential support area. Let's pull over the other charts, the white background charts. Let's look at the daily first. Let's actually expand it out. We're looking for any kind of a signal out here. We're looking for a TD9 count if one exists. Oh, son of a gun, it does. So now what you've got here, Bob, is you have bar number eight that formed yesterday. Bar number nine has to complete today, and this is at a breakout level of 667. Now, bar number nine, in order to complete today, it must close. It must close below 706. If you get that, then what you have is a TD9 count bottom at a breakout level of support, along with an oscillator and change line has changed colors. And that's priced at 727. So that becomes the price target. If price can close above that, then you're looking at 777. 777, yeah, like uh, we're playing a uh, slot machine out there. Uh, and if you get above 777, 811, 833. But you do have a valid bottoming pattern that is or appears to be forming in PRQR. It needs to complete that pattern today. Let's look at the weekly time frame charts. And the weekly chart out here, other than just potentially trading back to the bottom of its profile, I don't have much. If we look at the monthly time frame, is there any kind of signal out here? There is not, not that I see at this stage. Now the signal is price is trading above the top of the monthly profile, so that is a positive. So uh, what do we got on the short term charts? 65 as a bottom signal. Price needs to close above 689 to suggest a potential breakout. Nothing on the 130. 
nothing on the 195 out there. So back to the daily, I would watch this. It does look like it has a bottom uh, out here that uh, could have already formed. Just depends on today's price action. So Bob A., I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. And uh, we just have a few moments here before we go to our commercial and then come back to the last uh, last uh, segment out here. So just a quick pop in and take a look at what's going on in the uh, market. So equity futures have traded off a bit. Let me uh, try to get over to the equity future charts out here. We're going to go take a look at those short-term time frame charts here momentarily as we're going to the break. We'll take a look at that screen. That screen shows us what? Again, shows us the power of the TD9 count both the breakout and the breakdown levels. Look at those green horizontal lines. They've been tested and so far they've been rejected. But a price close above them, what's that gonna tell us? Especially too close above those levels. And say we're headed higher. You're ready. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. You want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Let's finish uh, the show. Take a look at Marvell and uh, Palantir. This is for Hector. And Patty, they are the fuel injectors. So in the case of Marvell out here, Hector, the signal is that it wants lower pre Oh, we've got the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Give me a moment here. 
Let's get to the right screen. Uh, let's get to the black background screen. There we go. So now when we take a look at Marvell. You can see that we have three now consecutive closes below the bottom of its daily profile, 71.99, telling us it wants lower price. So the lower price area initially that we'd look at on the weekly chart is the uh, bullish structured weekly profile. So it's between 62.64 and 66.49. The monthly chart, nothing there to really assist us. Let's look at the white background charts. And as we pull this over here, we're going to see on the daily time frame, you have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Uh, price below the bottom of that profile suggests price pulls back to the 67.15 area. That is its breakout support. No bottom signal uh, at this stage as it gets there, but that's where price should at least target. And then uh, below that, the other areas that we looked at. On the weekly chart out here, you're going to form a TD9 count top. And if price closes today below 71.70, its message is that price should pull back to 62.64 to 66.49 and below 62.64 would be 52.79. We're not making that call just yet, but we are making the call that if price does close below 71.70 hectare, you should expect that this will pull back further. Again, that's 62.64, 66.49 level out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at Marvell real quickly here. Palantir, PLTR is the ticker symbol out here. And PLTR has an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, it's completed the the one to one level out there you can see that or i apologize the one to 1.27 level is what it got to yesterday but that's not a bullish reversal candle and not until you get a bullish reversal candle does palantir become a buy but if you do get one of those then hector go ahead and fire away but we're not there just yet folks thanks so much for joining us all of you that joined me early from eight to nine thanks so much for doing that of course those of you listening from one to two very much appreciate it. i'll be back at the normal time frame slot on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And then Thursday, we'll do the 8 to 9, and Friday, there won't be a show. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. We'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Take care. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find 